Welcome back to my channel for another video. Today's video is my first Halloween costume tutorial and I'm so very excited. My first video of this Halloween season is the steampunk aristocrat. So if you're interested to see how I came up with this very steampunk inspired lady, then stay tuned. First, I'm started off with a pair of combat boots that I haven't worn in a while. I got them from Myers Target, one of those places. And I'm going to create them and steampunk them out in the design that flows well with this hat. Here I have a few bits, bobs, and ends, a few gears, a few gadgets, a few ringlets, a few charms that I'm going to take and to accessorize my boots. Starting with the paint, I use um, a black metallic paint that I got from Michaels. And I'm going to use that to cover the blue zipper that's on the, that's on the back of the boot. The blue does not go with my overall theme or color scheme, so I'm going to cover that up. Then I go in with this copper paint that I got from Hobby Lobby. I think it's by the brand um, Craftsmith. And I'm gonna use that to create a nice coppery gold trim along the bottom of my boot, on the sole and the heel of my boot, to mimic the copper trim that goes around the brim of my hat. I also removed my shoelaces and I wanted to paint over them. Because this is steampunk, there is no correct way to properly steampunk a clothing item or anything. So you just go about it and just fill it out the way you want it to be done. While I'm decking out my shoes, I'm going to explain exactly what steampunk is for some people who may not know. Steampunk is a science fiction subgenre that has historical settings, usually in the Victorian era or the turn of the century, um, where everything is powered by steam instead of advanced technology such as electricity. So, which makes sense. So, while most of the stuff is steampunk, it's covered in cogs and pipes and chains. Okay. So, the purpose of steampunk in an item is to make it seem like the cogs and the chains and the pipes are controlling the item. Um, as you can see here, I'm just adding the gears to my boots. I want it to look like the gears are controlling how I, I zip up my boots as well as how I tie the laces. Um, usually with the gears, it's, it's more functional than decorative. So you want to let something look like it's there and it has a purpose being there. And again, I say there is no rhyme or reason to adding or steampunking a piece of clothing or item. You just fill it the way you go. Um, the more, the better, but don't get too carried away. Um, and do things intentionally so that it looks like it all works together cohesively and that a certain gear or a certain aspect is functioning, making the object work. So like I said, I have the gears going up to my loops as well as down to my zippers. It seems like that the gears are controlling, mechanically moving the zipper and laces to tying itself. <laughs> And then of course I threw in a few just for decorative purposes. So you guys tell me, does anyone know of the steampunk genre? I mean, are you familiar with it? Um, if so, what are some of your favorite steampunk movies or books or such? Mine is of course uh, the lead of Extraordinary, Extraordinary Gentlemen and um captain tomorrow i think that's right captain tomorrow and i would love to know guys what are you planning to be for halloween this year All right, moving right along, I'm gonna go in to show how I created this tiered, layered, um, ruffled skirt. So 
So as you can see, I have two skirts here. One is a off-white textured pattern skirt and the other one is just a black um, skater skirt that I got from Rev Dolls and the white skirt I got from the thrift store. I took this strap piece of leather here. It, part of it is from an old purse and the other part is from like a belt. And I used the part from the purse to be the strap part so I can get the buckle of the belt. And I'm going to use that to make it seem like that that is acting as the harness to hold to hike up my skirt so first I decided where I wanted to hike up my skirt whether I wanted to be one or two and what side then I have that pinned down now I am going to sew the ruffle and gather the parts together you want it to look intentional so you just don't want to grab the fabric and put it up you kind of want to gather it and fold it up so it can look look a little bit more neat has some stylized to it So you can see me here, I am hand tacking those ruffles and gathers together. Next, I lay down the buckle, the strap, the leather strap and buckle, and I'm going just to place that. So again, it looks like the leather strap is what holding my skirt up. Skirt up. Again, you want to place things so they look intentional and they just don't look like it's thrown together. And the reason for the paint, I got paints that are metallic and base. So copper, silver, gold, uh, bronze, those are good colors to use when if you're painting um, a hat or accessory or gloves or objects or as well as for makeup. And again, once I had those ruffles sewn into place, I went ahead and I sewed down my uh, leather strap. And again, placing that just so it could seem like that the skirt, that the leather is coming from underneath the skirt and that's what's holding my skirt up. And once I did that, I went and added a few gears and cogs as well as um, I may go back and paint over it again. So next I'm gonna show you how to create this beautiful jabat or cavat. Cavat and jabat were very popular during the Victorian um, So here I have a pattern that I created a few years ago when I made my first cravat. And here I have a um, piece of satin material. At first I was going to use a pillowcase, but I like the look of the satin material so it give a little shine, a little luxe look to it. Taking my pattern and folding it in half, I also put my fabric on the fold and I'm just pinning that down. Um, I will try to leave a link below to where I found this pattern. It was very difficult to find. I kind of had to fix it, work around it, but I will show you the blog where I found the actual drawing of the pattern so you can print that out and use it yourself. I'm gonna cut this fabric out on the fold and I'm gonna cut that twice. So you need two pieces of this pattern because you need a front and a back. Once I have both pattern pieces cut out, I'm going to lay those right sides together and then I'm going to clip and pin that along the seams and I'm going to do a straight stitch all along the seam, leaving a gap so that you can be able to turn this right side out. So it's up to you where you want to leave that gap. You can leave it in the middle, you can leave it at the top, you can leave it at the bottom on the sides. That's up to you, whichever works comfortable for you. And when I get to the corners, because I want this to have a nice, clean, sharp finish, I do a pivot turn when I get to the very ends of the tail as well as on the sides. And don't forget to leave the gap, guys. So once you have everything, you want to turn it out inside out, right side out and see how it looks. And then you want to go back and do a zigzag stitch. I went back and did a zigzag stitch because this fabric frays like it is its job. Then I cleaned up all, trimmed away, cleaned up all the excess 
fabric so that I can have a nice clean look and everything can lay flat when I press it. <laughs> And then again, you want to turn this right side out. And you want to be careful to poke out those corners so everything can be crisp and sharp. And then once you have everything turned right side out and you have your corners all poked out so everything is nice and sharp, you want to go ahead and tuck away your opening. So, um, pin that or clip that away and you're going to do a top stitch all along the perimeter of the jabat once you have everything turned inside out. And this would just help. This would just create a nice clean finish so everything can lay flat on itself. And again, I did the same thing when I get to the corners or the edge, I did a pivot turn so I could have a nice sharp edge. Okay, now you can see me here trying to figure out how I wanted to add my lace. Um, I knew I wanted to add my lace before I fold and crisp and sewed everything together. And here I, you can see me here just folding up everything and just giving it a nice quick press so everything lays flat and I can have the folds exactly where I need them to be so that when I add my lace I know exactly how I want my lace to lay on the folds. Don't worry guys I'm going to go back and show you how I folded my jabat. decided to fold my lace in half and have that kind of just follow the folds of the jabat. And then I took a second layer of that to hide the first layer that sits behind the bottom half of the jabat and added a layer on top of it. And kind of had that disappearing into the curves and folds of the top ruffle layer. And you can make your jabat any way you want it any way you want i've seen them where they just someone has just taken lace trim and just layered the lace on top of a piece of fabric and that and that's their jabat you do not have to use the method i'm using i just like this jabat since i already owned already made one like this and it was easier for me to recreate um for the purpose of this video so after I have decided where I want my lace to lay, I'm going to go over that again with a straight stitch just to secure my lace to my jabat. Okay guys, this is where I show you how I folded my jabat. I just came in with the widest part of jabat and I just folded the widest parts inwards, trying to match them up in the middle as close as possible. And then I went in with the smaller tail end of the jabat and did like an accordion style, accordion style going back and forth and laying those on each other to give like a waterfall effect. If you want to slow these, if you want to slow this down and, re and repeat this over and over again, you can do so. And you can see me here. I just folded the way the last, um, the ends of the last panel, so it can have a nice clean. Uh, polished look to see it's just to make it seem like it's all one piece flowing in together so 
So I took my, I took some ribbon and I unfolded that in half and just seeing how I want it to look. I went back with some lace, added a few rows of lace so I can have a nice little placement and backdrop to add my um, cameo. I measured out how much ribbon I need for my neck, which is about 15 inches. And I added um, another inch just for seam allowance and um, to attach my um, closure, which would be my hook and eye. And I burnt... I took a lighter and burnt the edges of my ribbon so it doesn't fray. So after I have added the lace as so it could be the backdrop for my cameo, I went ahead and I added the ribbon. And I did a basic stay stitch over the top of it just to attach the ribbon to the cravat or jabat. Whichever way you want to say it, it's both the same thing. And here you can see me here. I am playing with the placement of my cameo. I really like this. I picked this up from Michaels and I just secured that with a bit of hot glue. And at the same time, I'm using some buttons that I found that look like little clocks. And I am added that into the inside of this um, watch pocket watch clock holder pocket watch holder that I also got from Michaels and then I just sewed a hook and eye on the ends of my ribbons for my jabat just so it's easier for me to secure and take on and off all right last thing I'm going to show you guys how I created this blazer Anywho, I'm going to take some black fabric paint and use this dumbass um, stamp that I got from hmm, Michaels, I believe. Most of the stuff I got from Michaels and Hobby Lobby and some things from Joanne. And I'm going to use that to stamp on the backside of my blazer. This did come out how I pictured it, but I kind of went with it. It kind of gave it an old rustic feel as if this jacket has been worn a few times and the pattern on it is starting to fade now i'm going to take some beautiful lace trim that i got from joann's and i'm going to use that to attach to the cuff of my blazer Then I'm going to take some black ribbon to cover, to also add to the cuff of my blazer, just to cover up the seam from the lace. And then I use that beautiful, that same beautiful lace trim to add to the lapels of my blazer to cover up a previous lace that I had on there from my um, Mad Hatter costume that has started to tear and fray and it was really hard to get off. So I just covered it up. And it just gives a kind of layered effect and it makes it look old and um, worn. And again, I just do a basic top stitch over, all, over the lace with some black thread. You can't even see it. And then I took the same little clock buttons and I added those to the buttonholes of my blazer. You can use any kind of buttons. I just like these, these bronze carpet ones. It kind of just went with the overall theme that I was going for. And then to finish the look off, I just took some of my little bobs and ends and I just added that to the details on the cover of the pockets as well as on the cuff of the sleeves to look like cufflinks. All right, stylists, that's it. That's the finished look. That is your steampunk aristocrat. You can use the same method to be a steampunk pirate, to be a steampunk anything doctor scientist artist it's the same philosophy that you just find some good old pieces or some new pieces and just create your own look steampunk because it is a fictional genre it is completely up to your imaginary you can let yourself fly you could be a steampunk uh, mad hatter you could be a steampunk uh bell from beauty and the beast you could be a steampunk anything you could be a steampunk tinkerbell let your imagination fly i absolutely love this it has been a creative bucket list item of mine for a long time long time to be a steampunk anything and i'm so glad that i finally had the opportunity to complete this to create this for you guys my name is victoria 
named after her father Victor. She is the only child of a wealthy merchant. She had the misfortune of being born a female instead of male and now she is the sole heir to his promising enterprise and company. She gambles, she drinks, she entertains herself with cockfights, she smokes, she cusses, and she is a notorious flirt. She is everything but a proper lady. That's so much so much fun putting together and the weather and the weather in the background, the fog, cold, rainy weather was perfect because in London it's always cold, foggy, and rainy. Almost always. Um, so guys, you guys want to see how I, um, did my makeup as well as style this wig, then stay tuned for part two of this video. Yes, there is a part two. The lace little sleeveless gloves I just made from some, the leftover lace. Um, the corset bustier is thrifted. Um, the button up white shirt is also thrifted. I added a chain to my stop watch, pocket watch. And I added some leftover white ribbon to the end of my braid just to give it a more feminine touch. Alright guys, you guys have fun. Let me know what you guys think of this tutorial, this costume. I'm so excited that I'm finally able to give you guys a, ho a proper Halloween costume. Thank you so much for watching, stylers. You guys have fun. Be safe. Stay creative. Stay awesome. And always remember to love yourself fully. Until next time.